Hey everybody, today I wanted to talk about how narcissistic abuse can actually cause brain damage. Now that might sound really dramatic and severe, but it's been proven that not only do you suffer emotional consequences, psychological consequences because of long-term narcissistic abuse, but it has severe effects on the brain. When I learned what happens to your brain because of narcissistic abuse, it really helped me to make sense of what happened to me. Because after you're done focusing on what the other person is doing that's toxic, the behaviors, after you break free from the enmeshment, once you begin to look at yourself, you realize that you have undergone some extreme changes. When you don't understand why, it's really confusing, it's scary, and it's really discouraging. So understanding this aspect of narcissistic abuse, it's, it's one of those pieces of the puzzle that helps us to understand it and when we can understand it, we can move our healing journey in a direction. So without further ado, let's talk about what happens to your brain. Long-term narcissistic abuse causes a swelling of your amygdala and a shrinking of your hippocampus. And I wanna explain what happens when this takes place and you might be able to identify some of the behaviors or changes that you've undergone. Hopefully this information will help you to make sense of it. So the hippocampus is the part of our brain that's located below each temporal lobe and its function is to be responsible for our short-term memory, which ultimately is connected to our learning. Because without short-term memory, learning is impossible. We'll be like the eternal Dory who learned something and ultimately immediately forgot it. What we learn is first stored in the short-term memory and then it gets converted into long-term memory which is how learning occurs. So when our hippocampus is damaged, it can cause severe consequences on the mental health of the person. One study from Stanford University found that when your hippocampus is shrunk, that creates a larger volume of the stress hormone cortisol to be running through your body. So in effect, one of the consequences of having your hippocampus shrunk is the fact that you are going to feel a lot more stressed. The smaller the hippocampus, the more stress you're going to feel every day in your life. So how would you be able to tell if your hippocampus has shrunk, right? You can ask yourself a few questions. One, has my memory changed? If you used to have a good memory, if you were used to having a very good memory, do you feel like now you can't remember things? Do you have a hard time learning? For example, a lot of people will be on the internet learning information that's gonna help them in their life. And when they watch that video, they get it. And it's like, oh my goodness, this is exactly what I need. And yet they go home and it's as if it went in one ear and out the other. And it's only because with that hippocampus being shrunk, that information doesn't get stored and then processed into your long-term memory, which helps you to learn. So it's almost like you stay stuck in a loop. You're learning, but then it's like you're learning it again and you're hearing it again and you're hearing the same information again and again, but you're having difficulty moving forward. You're having difficulty applying what you're learning because it's not sticking. That's a sign that your hippocampus has been affected by the long-term abuse. The other area of the brain that gets affected is our amygdala. So while the hippocampus shrinks, the amygdala, which is where our emotions get stored, which is where our emotions get regulated, our fear, our hate, our anger, our anxiety, our fight or flight, where that is stored in the amygdala winds up swelling. And the consequences of having an enlarged amygdala is that you constantly live in a fight or flight state of mind. You're, you're living always in this heightened sense of fear or state of fear and anxiety. It's almost like this switch for our fight or flight broke. So we needed that fight or flight or we need our fight, fight or flight when there's danger, but we don't need it 24 seven. But due to long-term narcissistic abuse, that switch gets broken and that's what happens. We are always living in fight or flight, which is why eventually after a long time with a toxic person, the littlest thing that they say or do can wind up setting you off because you are always already at a 10. When you're living in that state of mind where your amygdala is swollen, it's um, taken control, so to speak, you're living as if you're walking on eggshells, there's fear around every corner, every word, every thought, everything you say or do, you're living on edge. 
when your amygdala has been hijacked and it's always on and you're always feeling anxiety, fear, anger, panic attacks, when you're in that state of mind, it's very easy for the person in the toxic relationship, the abuser, to then point the finger at you and say, well, look, you're the one that's suffering anxiety. You're the one that's having all these problems. Therefore, you are the problem. And since you know that this isn't you, that you've become something almost foreign to yourself in your own eyes, you can start to believe it. That's one of the scary things that happens on top of all the abuse that's already taking place. You can begin to think that you really are the problem because you see these changes in yourself. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video because I remember blaming myself and thinking, okay, there is something wrong with me. And there was, <laughs> there was something wrong with me. My brain had changed. My brain was suffering the consequences of long-term psychological and emotional abuse, but it wasn't because I was crazy. It wasn't because everything was my fault. I was in an unhealthy, toxic environment, and that was the consequence of it, not the root cause of that toxic environment, which is what the narcissist wants you to believe. It's the consequence of that environment. And that's why I wanted to make this video so that if you are dealing with memory loss, if you're dealing with where you can't understand what's going on, you can't seem to think clearly, you can't seem to grasp onto a new concept and apply it so that you continue to move forward, or if you feel like your emotions have more power over you than your logical thinking, that's a consequence of severe and prolonged emotional and psychological abuse.